Well, about once a year I find myself playing Foundation again because of an update or because I miss it or just because it's a fantastic experience and a wonderful medieval city builder that, by the way, is available now on Steam. Well, consider today's episode as kind of a, hey, I miss this game, but I can't wait to come back to it when they have a big O update sometime later this year. On the right side of the screen, you'll see that the game was last updated in December 14th of 2021. And in 2021, I played this game early that year. And now that we're in 2022, a year has passed and there's been lots of great things. We've recently done some live streams on this game, but no new real playthrough here in the videos. And I know a lot of you guys really like the videos on the channel, especially of City Builders. So consider this as kind of a, hey, I miss you guys who like the videos and a, hey, coming soon to Foundation are some big updates and I want to get excited about them. And I want to make it clear that I'm going to be playing Foundation again in a full playthrough whenever they release all of the new stuff that they have planned, including all sorts of new buildings and uh, map generator and new resources and things like that coming soon to the game. So if you want to see more of this game, make sure you go ahead and click tap blow up and destroy that like button. And thank you very much for subscribing. We're going to jump in now as a, hey, I missed you guys. Welcome back and more to come soon kind of episode. Welcome everyone to the beautiful and glorious kingdom of Raptoria. Welcome back, everybody. Let's jump in and make ourselves a new game. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, previously in the live streams, I've been playing in a game map called Hills. And again, there will be a custom map generator here in the future. There's also some modded maps in the game, too. So if you're a big fan of that, you can go ahead and try out all the, uh, you know, the modded maps, too. And there's tons of mods for this game as well. If you're a big fan of Foundation, rather, I should say, you should be a big fan of Foundation because it's fantastic. But if you like Austria, if you like Banished, if you like uh, Settlement Survival or any sort of medieval building game, this is a fantastic one for you and usually goes on sale often. I think we're going to go ahead and play on a map that I haven't played on in a while and or that looks new to me, although it looks like they've revamped it a little bit. Uh, Fluvial? I think that's how you say it. Map features long stretches of river that split the land. Bridges must be built. Uh, earlier to allow passage across the rivers for villagers and immigrants alike. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump in to yet another wonderful kingdom of Raptoria. Glory to Raptoria down below in that comment section. Let's get started. Welcome aboard. I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you enjoy today's video. Let's go. Oh, quite the beautiful map. Playing this game always reminds me of games like, uh, for example, Stronghold, which I hope they really do like a remake of the original Stronghold. Keep the story the same, but like bring it into uh, modern graphics and modern gameplay with modern UI. Speaking of UI too, I realized that a lot of you didn't like the UI that was in the game from before. And we'll see some of this stuff here shortly, but they've revamped basically the UI on the main screen as well as how the uh, kind of the inner workings or otherwise known as the book of the game work. Things like how to assign workers and soldiers and things like that. And oh yes, in this game you can build an army, build defenses. It doesn't really work like uh, it does in kingdoms and castles. You can't really be attacked. But you can build a giant army and send it out to attack others and invade them as, as the king would require. Oh yes. Well, let's go ahead and find a place to settle our kingdom. I think we can purchase uh, territory pretty much anywhere that's pre-marked. Um, some of these areas are a little harder to start in than you would imagine because, you know, they're so... Um, well, they have to have several resources to start with. They have to start with berries, rocks, and of course, or otherwise known as stone, and also trees. I realized recently, too, that you can actually mine the stone in some of these rock faces. So if you don't want to have the stone near your town anymore, which oftentimes I would because, well, there was nowhere else to get stone in the earlier versions of the game, you can now go out here where you can also find iron and marble and gold and other resources. Quartz, for example, in these large deposits that you can have your bailiff go out and look for as soon as you build your manor. Well, let's go ahead and build somewhere. I think we'll uh, probably start our construction here, although this is also another good spot, too, and I think we'll go ahead and start right here, our beautiful and glorious kingdom of Raptoria. Eventually, we can do fishing and such, too, and in the previous map I showed, the hills map, we are just not able uh, to do any sort of fishing because there's no bodies of water, but here we can. Let's go ahead and build our village center. I hope the uh, developers update this and make something different rather than just a pile of boxes, although it kind of starts like how Banish does, where really nobody is in your kingdom until you make it. So everybody here is just basically bare bones until you've gotten started. Pop that down and let's build. You can also rename everything too. So if you want to call it uh, town square or uh, village center or something like that, you can do that too. Ah, good. All of our wonderful people are here. And by the way, I think they blink now. Although I've been watching this, uh, <laughs> it's quite frightening. Everybody just stands around and doesn't do anything for a while. But if you put them in a marketplace, I've noticed a few jobs that you can assign them to, they'll actually blink and stuff. So um, yeah, I know that's such a weird thing to say. But anyway, 
Our people, now that they've arrived, need a uh, set of buildings in order to get started. And so building is the first and foremost thing you need to do in your kingdom. And we'll go ahead and build that right, right around here. I'm going to try to make this place as compact as possible. So let's try to um, make a really tight-knit kingdom in this one little hexagon that we have. We'll go ahead and ask our people to build. This building is auto-immediately built because, well, it's the only building that can't be built without a builder's workshop because it's the first one you're placing. We'll assign three builders then to work in our kingdom. And there's a lot of quests on the left side that we may skip just because it's it's more of a guidance, really. It helps you to, uh, it's kind of like a tutorial or a, hey, if you get lost, here are some report, uh, important things to remember. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start with a berry uh, harvester now, a gathering hut. Now we'll gather berries. And we're also going to start logging, too, so we can build that at pretty much any time in any order. Since uh, everybody's going to have to, um, you know, work together to uh, gather food and all sorts of things like that. I accidentally placed that too close to this forest, which we can't cut, but we can go ahead and cut over here. Now, one great thing I love about this game is that you can actually do, uh, the people themselves will make pathways back and forth to buildings. So for example, now that we have three people assigned to the builder's workshop, they should eventually start going, uh, start get, getting and going over here to the uh, lumber camp to build that, since we have tools and storage. So you'll see people walking back and forth. Now we have this wonderful Raptorian working uh, to deliver the tools that are needed to build that logging camp. And look at that. You can very faintly, if you look very closely, you might not be able to see it, but you can actually see them starting to make paths. Now, if you don't like them walking directly and you want to have some sort of alternative route, or if you want to funnel them into using some sort of a bridge or something like that over a territory, which you can build bridges on the ground, not only just water, but if there's like a large ravine or like a canyon or something and you want them to walk across the uh, bridge instead of working uh, or walking <laughs> through the middle of the... Uh, canyon, which sometimes they'll do, you can use Forbidden Land to tell them, hey, don't walk here, and they'll walk different pathways to do that. Well, once that logging camp is completed, which it is now, we'll go ahead and uh, start instructing our people to start cutting down trees. We'll go ahead and ask them to cut down anything around here. We'll make like a nice little, I don't know, cut into the forest and try to keep as many trees as we can to make the uh, village look nice, but we're going to assign three people now to do that, and three people now to start gathering food. Actually, we only have two. All right, so we have 410 out of 500 coins remaining. We're at a deficit because we're not really doing any sort of sales or exports to our people. But a marketplace will be important now that we're importing, uh, or rather, uh, gathering berries. They're definitely hungry, so we'll go ahead and make ourselves a little marketplace here to get started. And also a granary to store those things, too. So somewhere near the town center, we'll make ourselves a little uh, marketplace. I guess we're putting down a stick to build that. And in this game, you can make all sorts of custom buildings. Everything can be customized from your churches to monasteries to cathedrals to uh, large uh, defensive military structures such as your fortress or your marketplace. So if you want to have like a round marketplace or a long marketplace, you can do that. So for example, we can set up a lot of little stalls that go down a long way or we can make them into a triangle and uh, put them back to back, that kind of thing. I like the triangle idea, so let's do that. Uh, the uh, little white dot, I believe, is where the worker will stand. So you want to face your uh, marketplace towards wherever you want people to uh, pass by. So we'll build one there. I'm actually going to build three. Uh, they do just take ten logs to build. So uh, different types of food are sold at each type of um, marketplace. So, for example, you'll make bread. So you'll need to sell that. You'll make cheese. You'll need to sell that. Or fish. You'll need to sell that, too. Multiple uh, food sources is just better for your people. More things to eat. Definitely makes them a lot happier. Now, I may have placed these things a little too close. I'm going to turn on and off the snap in order to, um, you know, have them attached to the marketplace if we want to. And so if you build them too close, they kind of, you know, overlap each other. But we're going to try to conserve as much space as we can because we're only starting in this small little hexagon to begin with. And so um, I'm probably not going to expand too much as it costs 500 gold to do so. And it takes a little while to get up to that level. So you start small so that way you don't fail. But we can always redesign things, we can delete things, we can move things, and uh, the great thing is is that once you've started your city, if you happen to make this area your industrial area, you can always move your residents to live somewhere else on the other side of the map, and that's nice too. All right, well, we've got a lot of wood being gathered, wonderful, and you can actually kind of see them starting to cut out some of those trees there, and planks are being brought back over too. Well, let's build a granary now to store our food, a very useful building to store cheese and meat and... A few other things like that work on these uh, warehouses will begin as soon as we click the build button. And you can see it only costs about 50 coins to do so. And the resources that are needed are wood and stone. 
So we now know we'll need to start mining stone as well. So let's put down one of those two. A great thing about this game is that you can do a lot of pre-planning. It might cost you to put down the blueprint uh, at the very beginning, but the nice thing is, is that it helps to plan out your city for eventual um, expansion. And of course, this red circle here is kind of an area that people won't find as appealing. So at the very beginning, they don't need houses until they become, uh, like for example, uh, I think serfs are the initial level that they can be upgraded to. I think they're called, um, I can't remember how it works. I think it's like visitors and then they're upgraded to serfs and then eventually um, residents and citizens or something along those lines. And eventually that'll help to unlock more things. If we take a look at our book here, we can see oh, that everybody does start as a serf. And you can see how they're assigned and their happiness. Happiness of the serfs doesn't matter too much at the start because we're just getting started. So, of course, they want a lot of things like um, homes and luxury goods. And those are things that will come later. So they're kind of a little bit more patient. They're understanding that we're just getting started and so that we're not going to have a lot of stuff. Here are some other kingdoms that we can trade with or other... Maybe you could call them counties, as we're not the king of our kingdom. It is called, of course, Foundation. We're building the foundations of many different um, uh, regions or counties. And, of course, we can build the home for our manor and, uh, or our lord. And then, of course, we can help the king to go on all sorts of different quests. Here are the kingdoms, uh, or allied with the kingdom. I guess we can call these county of Davenport, uh, Northbury, and Middle. And hopefully more coming soon. You can see what they want to buy and what they'll sell and their prices. And uh, we can also actually here set up our resources too. So things that we can import or export. We're definitely going to have to make a trade partner early uh, with, I believe, Davenport, is it? Uh, who sells tools. Uh, so that way we can import those. It's actually, um, yeah, they want to sell tools here at Northbury. So that'll be somebody that we partner with right away. There's other things to keep in mind too. Different estates for the labor, the kingdom, and the clergy. So there's other people we have to please. We have to please the people, the king, and the... Uh, the clergy too, and doing so will give us uh, extra points and such for new buildings to unlock. Great thing about this is it really helps you to grow your kingdom, so eventually you can upgrade to having a, um, a like a, a rustic church and adding on to that, or a fishing hut which will bring in more food, and then quests of course that will be coming in to unlock more stuff and to give us more resources. Very nice. Alright, well the gathering hut is gathering berries as quickly as they can. We're producing berries now. And it looks like we're going to uh, have the marketplace up soon. Right now we're playing at the slowest speed. I usually play on three, uh, three times speed. After a while it becomes a little slow to continuously build bigger and bigger buildings. And you can build massive churches. Like we can build a huge church or a massive military base on this island. And so of course the bigger you build a building, the bigger the benefits of like storing gold. For example, right now our threshold is uh, 500, our maximum amount of gold. But if we build like for example a big old... Um, treasury building at our manor lord's home. Our manor, I guess. I always want to keep saying manor lords because I want to play that game. Another wonderful medieval city builder. But, of course, the bigger that is, the more it takes to build, but the more capability it has to do other things for the kingdom, like storing gold. Alright, well, looks like we got ourselves a little shop going, and our goal right now is to produce berries, so to prevent starvation we'll need to secure a basic source of food. Produce berries. So, in order to have our people uh, start working on some of these things here, we're going to go ahead and tell them that it's okay for extraction. So right now our construction guy here is building the stone uh, mining area, but we need to approve it for extraction. So for the stone miner, we're going to tell them, hey, it's okay to mine stone here. So other stone miners, if there was one over here, we could build it here and they could walk all the way to gather stone and all the way back. But it's just built a better to build it close. And we'll do the same here with our little berry farm. So let's go ahead and get started there. And boom, you see our little berry gatherers starting to work on gathering berries. They'll bring them back to the little hut, and then eventually they can store them in the granary when we have more materials available to build that. Granaries are good, increases your storage capacity, and weather is a thing in this game. Storms can hit your kingdom and uh, will definitely hurt your kingdom's expansion a little bit because, of course, a shortage of food means unhappy people, unless people want to immigrate to a kingdom that's having any sort of, well, especially a food problem. <laughs> All right, well, no quests right now. We'll continue to um, wait for those to come in, and we'll continue to cut down trees. They don't want us to stock resources, so would you look at that? We need to build a granary now, and, uh, of course, we're going to get started on that as soon as we have more stone. Let's go ahead and assign some people then to gather stone. We're going to reappropriate our workforce. Let's go ahead and get maybe one person on wood cutting. We'll go ahead and get the other two back into the... Uh, back into the other jobs. Now let's go ahead and try to get at least one person in each job. So we'll have one builder, one logger, 
one person working at the marketplace. We'll have that one person sell berries. We've assigned them now to sell berries at the marketplace. That's a very good idea. We'll have one person working at the... Uh, the... What is this here? The stone miner? Yeah, there we go. One person working at the berry... Uh, harvester, the gathering hut, I should say, and the stone cutters camp will have one person too. And then we can see how many people are unemployed here eventually. Three are unemployed. Always a good idea to have a little unemployment in your kingdom. Because that always gives you an opportunity to expand into new areas of industry. For example, if you're going to do um, iron mining, that's going to take a few people to mine the iron. It's going to take a few people to burn uh, trees into charcoal. It's going to take a few people to work at the blacksmith. And a few people to transport all those goods back and forth to your warehouses. So you think to yourself, oh man, I have 15 unemployed. That's a lot of people. Not really. Everything has to be uh, transported by hand or built by hand. So, it's going to take a while for everything to be transported, and it has to be done via, well, one of your villagers, your settlers, your your, uh, your people, your followers, your flock, whatever you want to call them. Alright, so we can see we have 44 wood, 10 cloth, 15 berries, that's good. Uh, the granary is going to be the next building to be constructed by the uh, builder. So I'm going to assign a few more people to the builder then, so we can get that done. And then we can take them off that job too. And we can always take a look at the book to see what people are doing and uh, who may be unemployed. So we have a couple, maybe one, two unemployed. Looks like just one. And we'll kind of keep them unemployed for random jobs as they come up since we have quite a bit of wood. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and put them on the stone because we're going to need a little bit more stone. Here we can see at the granary what's being delivered. We need uh, five in total stone and we need 15 in total wood. And there's also planks in this game too. So consider wood to be more like logs and planks to be more like lumber and some buildings require different uh, materials so it's not like you can take 100 percent of your logs and turn them into lumber some buildings still require logs so it's always good to have a majority of materials stored at each of your warehouses for example uh, a warehouse when you build it just like with the granary uh, it could store two or rather four resources four different resources but i usually assign it to have two of different types of materials uh, so for example you could have two slots of 50 totaling 100 of planks and two slots totaling to a hundred of um, stone so that way you can have 200 in total or rather 100 of each and two to 200 in total storage pretty nice all right a lot of people stand around to at the end of their work day these people would be back at home if they had homes to build and you can see here under the residential uh, or actually we don't have that yet but eventually we, would get, we, we do get a residential tab where we can tell people it'll be okay to build homes there. And that's a system that they'll be revamping in the future in this game. Where sometimes people, if you uh, paint the ground and tell them, hey, everybody can go ahead and build homes here. It's all based on desirability. But sometimes people won't build a home if you don't have them up to a certain level. I believe serfs don't really need a home. But once you make them into, um, I forget exactly what the first tier is. Let's just call, say it's called um, citizens. Um, but that's not what it is. But... Once you upgrade them through promotion, you have to pay them a little bit more or you have to pay for their upgrade, but they'll buy a lot more stuff in your kingdom, which is pretty cool. And that's a great way to generate money because, of course, the higher level they are, the more things they'll require, like clothing and different types of food, food maybe luxury goods like wine or uh, perhaps maybe um, uh, perhaps uh, uh, luxury goods like jewelry. But that's when you get them more and more upgraded. All right, looks like we got a builder here working on the granary now. Fantastic. We can go ahead and name this the uh, McDonald's if we want to or whatnot. Or berry storage. Great way to organize things. There we go. And we can go ahead and save that there. So, great way for you to be able to designate what's what. Gathering hut only gathers berries, by the way. So, just don't imagine it gathering anything other than that. Um, I would like to see more things in this game, though. Things like mushrooms and onions and... I always go back to Banished when I think of these types of games. Banished being, the at this point, great-great-grandfather of these types of survival building games like this. Although this one is much more casual. If you're not really a person who builds often in these types of games, if you are a little more hesitant to uh, games that seem to be a little more um, focused on material gathering, like Anno 1800, or maybe Banished, or uh, many of the other games we play on the channel, like Kingdoms and Castles, and you're more of a City Skylines player... I think Foundation is a great way to ease yourself into these kind of more freeform building games. Uh, 
City Skylines can be a little bit more grid-based, and Anno 1800 itself certainly is grid-based as well, building roads at 90 degrees. But you can see here, everybody's building their own roads, and you can, of course, tell them to uh, not take certain roads if you don't want to. If you want to keep everybody on the main road, uh, you can go ahead and tell them, hey, don't, don't walk this way, and they'll respect your wishes and either walk all the way around, or they'll walk um, wherever you've indicated not to be restricted. There we go. And that way your paths can be nice and organized and your kingdom will look good too. A lot of times things can get really smashed together and it's hard to tell what's what in this game. And so some more options to control um, districts would be good. And that's another thing we can do in the future is build walls around things. So we can take stone walls and wall off like an industrial area. For example, if we have a bunch of charcoal kilns, we can kind of wall that off and, you know, keep that so that way sheep don't wander near it or cows or pigs or whatever. We don't have pigs in the game, but you get what I'm saying. And more future things are always added. I love the look of the building buildings in this game. I think it's um, uh, not really low poly, but it definitely feels like a low poly game. Like, again, kingdoms and castles. And um, I just like the look of this game and how things get constructed slowly over time. And it's just really appeasing to look at. It almost looks like um, almost like Lego in a way. I could definitely see this building uh, being built out of Lego. And I don't know, it looks smooth and clean. And it's, it's just nice. It's really appeasing to look at. Really a great... Just a fantastic looking game. All right, let's speed up time a little bit. I think we have some more unemployed, but uh, we'll go ahead and get them assigned to, uh, if we can, to different jobs. And we'll try to gather some more stuff. Stock resources, now we're going to go ahead and assign... Actually, I made a mistake there in uh, assigning somebody to stone mining. when we should put them on the little berry storage now. Fantastic. And now we have another quest complete. Now, by doing that, we get money. And then, of course, the money from completing the, the starting quest will allow us to expand $500 or 500 coin per territory that we purchase. Plus, we have to pay yearly taxes on that, too. So make sure before you expand, you really build up an area and try to um, take advantage of all of its resources before you expand. A lot of initial things are wood that you can export and stone and berries are really your initial exports. But then, eventually, these floppy boys over here, fish, are a fantastic resource for... Uh, export and also to feed your people something a little bit more than just berries. All right, fill the needs of your newcomers. Ah, that's what they're called, newcomers. Okay, so newcomers then become serfs, and that's just a great thing for them to uh, stay here. All right, let's go ahead and build a well. We'll make that, uh, let's make that actually near the center of town. Oh man, you can see how things are getting smashed now. I think I need to do a little different in my building style. I always, um, in the initial days of this game, everything was kind of smashed together and real tight, and I think it's a great way to start that way, but again, eventually you can delete things, and, um, you know, we don't have highways in this game, we don't have cars, so people have to walk everywhere, so a um, berry picker having to walk a short distance to the granary, and the marketplace having to walk a short distance to pick that up, you can see the berries stored right there, um, once they go to sell those, it's nice that things are close by, so that way a lot of time isn't wasted in transit, so... A lot of things will be um, close together, but again, that makes the walls really important to be able to separate districts. I've tried to build things with a lot of walls before, not a lot of walls before. I can say that you definitely need a balance. You certainly don't want everything to be walled off, uh, but the differences in walls that you can make, including large defensive walls or city walls or uh, walls for your tavern and other civic buildings, really makes it look nice. And you can put a wall around your uh, your ma your manor lord, for example, your <laughs> your manor. I should say, I keep wanting to say Manor Lords, it's subconsciously in the back of my mind. Another wonderful uh, Total War um, and Foundation slash Banish slash and many other city builder that's coming soon that I'm really excited about. All right, raise the happiness of your village to 100. That's going to be easy since we're supplying the berries that they want. We've gone from the 60s up to 75 and it'll continue to increase to 100 and so that goal should auto-complete shortly. And then, once we're done with that, we should be able to... Uh, cordon off where we want houses to be and this is a perfect area here to build our town um, but more things will unlock soon now if you're an expert in this game or if you're a newbie in this game mods are definitely a thing that'll help you out in making things like for example stairs and uh, tiered cities where you can build a city like up on a hill and then have stairs and stuff go down to a lower section and can make a nice little tight-knit neighborhood rather than spread out a little bit more which is something I often uh, sometimes do too all right, we got money coming in from the berries. Awesome. We're about to hit our max, though, so the first thing we need to do is build a um, little manor's location or whatever you want to call it, the administration of a lord manor. That's what it is. And that's going to be a great way for 
us to expand our treasury and also will allow the king to send out a um, messenger in order to meet with us to tell us things that the kingdom needs and then it's on us to try to, as best as we can, uh, meet those demands. We can also do things like farming in the game and eventually make a bakery, again, cheese and glass making. A forester camp, important too, to regrow some of those uh, trees so that way the logging camp doesn't run out. So let's go ahead and make this into an industrial area over here. If you're going to make a industrial area in your uh, kingdom or in your county, uh, definitely put it tight together so that way the area is not as desirable for people. Nobody wants to be next to a lumber mill or a sawmill or something like that, so... You can always keep those likewise buildings together. We're going to build a sawmill that creates planks. We're going to build a forester camp that regrows trees. And we're going to try to keep this next to the logging camp, which will continuously cut down these trees too. And you can see not as desirable here. So we want to keep these buildings somewhat uh, away from the general public. And uh, wow, it's almost like we're we're being city planner plays here with our, our planning of a medieval city. It'd be interesting to see some of those people, uh, you know, like civ civic engineers try to build a medieval city with today's knowledge and stuff. Take today's uh, techniques and whatnot, and also try to do it with medieval uh, limitations. Like, for example, people literally having to carry a box. Ma'am, that is, that's going to be bad on your back. Wow. But hey, the Raptorians can do it. Good job, ladies. I think a lot of our ladies are in construction right now. Let's see, we've got uh, Chirozo, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, and Oofbert <laughs> working in the... Oh man, that makes me think of Eggs Benedict now. Oh man. Uh, village center unreachable. Sometimes these things will pop up here and, and then they'll disappear. I think the game sometimes has a uh, difficulty telling you, hey, um, something's unreachable. In this case, though, it's true. Because immigrants want to come to our town, but we don't have a bridge to go to the center of our island. People want to come here, but they have to enter from off map. And so you'll see uh, roads and such eventually be made from travelers who discover our city from off map. And so it's up to us to try to connect that somehow. So the best way for us to do that will be to probably buy another territory, like for example right here, and then eventually create a little bridge across so that way people can come into our little city. So we make a nice little entryway here. And since we're building the sawmill, that's going to be the first thing that we need to do in order to make planks for the bridge. And we can make a nice little bridge maybe here and here, or just one little passage here. And it's kind of cool because, well, we can do fishing down here too, so we can make this side our industrial area. So we'll do a lot of logging, we'll do a lot of fishing, we'll keep that stuff away from the people and make the residential homes down here, and then they can go to market and or go to work close by somewhere. Now we're at negative 13, so we definitely got to have some more uh, income, but it's going to all be based on how often uh, people buy food and how often a quest comes in from the, uh, from the king to our lord manor. All right, the next thing that needs to be built is the forester camp, so we need to assign somebody a job there. So let's go ahead and uh, reduce one of the builders again and try to get people making planks. We're going to double up on that production. So right now we're kind of stunlocked. There's not much we can do in our kingdom on, until we connect to the main world. Um, you know, think about it as like in City Skylines. We're connecting a highway to the entire world. But right now nobody can get to us with the, uh, the little uh, island, so... We're going to have to expand. I believe I built in this map before, too. I think I can remember. Oh, actually, this is a new map. Uh, yeah. I remember I built in a, a, a beautiful little uh, canyon where there'd be some really high up hills and stuff over here. And we built a, a bridge that went across. So the developers definitely added some new maps here. So nice to build in this one. Now, I know what you're thinking. Raptor, please continue the series. I know, I know. If you've watched this far, I definitely want to. But I want this to be, again, more of a, a project where it's like... I definitely want to <laughs> I want to play this game more, but I don't want to build a big O kingdom before we get a, a massive update. But again, keep in mind that today's episode is a, hey, if you haven't heard about it, Foundation exists, and it's an absolutely fantastic game. Also, if you have heard of it, you should get back into it because there's an update. Also, I've heard of the updates coming soon to the game, and I cannot wait. I absolutely cannot wait to get into the next major updates for 2022 for Foundation. So keep that in mind, that more content for this one is coming. This is just kind of like a little appetizer. Think of it like some uh, chicken tenders. No, this is mozzarella sticks for a big meal that's coming soon. And man, oh man, are the people behind Foundation going to deliver. Additionally, I plan to do more uh, live streams on this game, too, for a large kingdom that we played earlier. So just keep in mind that there's a lot of content to, out, out there showing the initial game. And that we can actually build, like, kind of close to castles now, too. 
So we're waiting for money to come in. We're waiting for 500 coins just so I can buy this territory here and then eventually build a bridge across. And then also tell our people that it's okay to cut down trees on this side too. So we can kind of try to keep the uh, middle of the village um, forested so it doesn't look completely uh, <laughs> completely cut down. It looks like the forester's ready too, so we can actually tell them to plant oak trees, poplar trees, pine, and sycamore. And uh, that looks great for appearances. Not to mention, uh, when you plant down for reforestation, if you want to, you can have your um, your forester building plant trees around uh, maybe like a village center or something so it can be cordoned off rather than using walls. So in this case, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and uh, ask them to plant some trees here. It'll look nice. Oh, and look at that. You can see the people going all the way around to go over there. Oh, man. They're taking the long way. That's not smart. Let's have them take this way. I want them to just go down this road quickly over here. And or pass through the uh, marketplace. I don't want them going through over here. And we'll kind of forest that area. So that way it looks nice. So yeah, we can cordon off areas with trees. We can use walls. It all looks beautiful. All right. Now we just need to get the amount of cash that we need in order to get to the 500 coins. So let's see if there's anything else we can do to generate money for everybody. Let's see. Well, we got plenty of berries, that's for sure. I wonder if we can take out a loan. I guess not, can we? And yes, the taxes will be 10 coin per week on this one, too. Now, another thing I remember, although it may have changed, is that in this game, when you go out on military quests, there's massive rewards for doing so. You can get big weapons, you get blueprints for new buildings, you can also get uh, perhaps a territory unlock. I think that's still a thing, where you can get free territory from the king. And so we're basically purchasing land from the king in order to uh, be allowed to expand our our little uh, county, I suppose. That's another thing to consider. All right, let's go ahead and have more berries sold. I'm going to see if we can assign more people here. We cannot at the moment. All right, I think we've got enough stone gathered. I'm going to go ahead and cut them off. I want to do things that solely generate money now. So I'm going to go ahead and assign another person to work at the marketplace. And we're going to try to just generate cash that way. So keep in mind, if you build in a kingdom such as this, it's going to be a little uh, more of a slower start because you need to build a bridge. So next time, if you start your kingdom, just build on the outskirts so that way you can build towards towards the center. Uh, a little difficult to do so, though. Some of the starting areas are not as flat. I think we could have started here, but as you can see, there's kind of a mountainous area here. So good idea to build on these long... Uh, peninsulas or these nice flat islands like we chose just not initially looks good though really a great really a great thing let's uh, gather more berries let's make sure our marketplaces are full okay we don't need anybody gathering any more logs we don't need anybody on on the sawmill so we're just going to have people now fully work in sustaining food production because that generates us money. So let's go ahead and build another... Or rather, let's go ahead and assign another berry picker. The berry pickers then will transport things to the warehouse. And we'll go ahead and make sure we only got one person assigned to the builder's workshop. Wells are important in this game too. Wells are a great resource for, for example, the bakery. Needs to turn flour into bread by using uh, water, flour. There's no yeast in the game, but... There we go. But it is something that's required to make bread. All right, so everybody's solely on foraging now. I'm going to assign, keep assigned one builder. And we're going to deliver more and more berries. That should boost our food up a little bit. And our goal today will try to be to build a bridge to connect to the rest of the kingdom. Because as you can hear that little bell, that ding-dings, that's people wanting to move to the kingdom. But we're a little stun-locked at the moment, which is totally fine for a little... Hey, I missed you. Good to see you. All right, we'll build another gathering hut there. We have plenty of logs, yes. Wood is uh, 10. Or required is 10. We'll have one of our builders come over right away. No unemployed, good. Let's make sure that's true. Forger, builder, trader, transporter. Excellent, great ways to make money. Let's see, do these buildings have any sort of upkeep for us? Oh, there we go. Upkeep is 324. Construction is negative 170. Ah, yes. So we did spend some money, too, in our construction. So that took away from our main funds a little bit. But 
another uh, gathering hut will do. It's a good idea to build maybe two, maybe three of these. They can gather from the berry bushes, um, which are actually, I think they're infinite. I don't think they ever run out, but there is, uh, I think they will eventually, I think they run out and then replenish. So it's all about keeping up with the replenishment rate. And I think two is usually what I do, but I don't know the exact numbers on that. It's good to start with just two. Always a good idea. All right, one transporter going back and forth. And, of course, everyone will have to buy some berries now. A very good start, I'd say. All right, so our next goal would be to purchase this territory here and then build a little bridge to connect. And then there probably would be some people connecting this way, uh, building a little uh, road as they come in down this way into our little kingdom. And a great idea to have this uh, island fortress. We could put a little wall around the city if we wanted to. Build a bunch of little fishing docks, and uh, eventually expand to stone bridges too, which are a little wider. I don't know if they provide any sort of uh, benefit other than just being shiny, but again, that little uh, ding ding means that people want to be um, in our kingdom and they want to go to the middle. So we got to build ourselves a bridge, but it all comes down to money. Kingdom's working great. All right, nothing else to build. Let's go ahead and assign. Chorizo, chorizo, I think that's what I'm trying to think of. Over to gather some more berries. And so the transporter should continue to bring over berries time and time and time again. Only a couple get gathered. It's great, there's not much sitting at the berry huts themselves. As the transporter immediately brings it to the storage and then immediately from storage to the market. And uh, keep in mind, when you build your markets, food and resources have to be picked up, from what I've seen, from a warehouse or a granary. So if you have a ton of bread at a bakery and people aren't picking it up from the, uh, the marketplaces and picking it up directly from the bakery, I think they do have to go to a granary first. I, I haven't seen any direct pickups. Ah, good. Money is normalized to zero. And so now the marketplace should bring in a lot of cash. Excellent. And everybody's happy. Wonderful. Well, if they're happy, I'm happy. And I'm happy to bring them some more goods. Yeah, this is usually why we play on the highest setting. At this point, we can go ahead and get ready to, uh, let's see, label out some more extraction. Let's go ahead and make sure the trees are nice. I want to have a little, little bit of a forest here, a little bit of a blocker. Keep some of the beauty of our city. Right click to delete, left click to paint. Very nice. And what we could do, too, is we could eventually um, surround these buildings with trees as well. So let's go ahead and ask them to reforest this. And we'll ask them to plant uh, only pine trees, I think would be nice. Yeah, we'll just do pine trees for this. So these will be regrown in this area that we've decided to cut down. Takes a long time for trees to regrow. Not too long, but it does, it does take a little bit of time. There we go. Looking good. And then maybe we can plant some trees here, too, to separate the roadway uh, from the um, houses that we plan to build in the southern section. Yeah, we'll build trees all the way up to the shoreline. We'll build some trees down here in this little area here. And then there'll be a roadway for people to get into the little neighborhood down here. So hopefully they take that way. There we go. Just so that way no lazy bones tries to go down into the, um, down through the forest and that type of thing. Then eventually we'll build walls and make a, like a beautiful stone wall here and you can add a ton of detail to everything. Oh, look at that, baby. We got so many berries. Awesome. Oh, yeah. All those marketplaces are full, too. Very good. All right. Now, eventually, we can get out of this financial situation. This is going to take some time for everybody to get hungry enough to do that. And uh, I've definitely played on this map before. I think in this in, in this northern section, uh, it used to be a larger lake. It looks like they've changed the map a bit. There used to kind of be a, a big lake here. This island wasn't here, but there were some of these other islands. And so you could kind of start, like, over here, and you could build a neighborhood here. It's so familiar. Uh, but when they brought around the new resources, or rather the resources that were in these large deposits, I love the way this looks. Absolutely beautiful. 
It looks like plastic. It looks like a playset. Uh, that's when they changed the map. So all good. All right, what are our upkeep right now? Is there... I think it's actually the buildings uh, that we need to... Uh, I think we could turn them off or... You can always demolish them too to actually see. Oh, yeah, there you go. Week Monthly... A weekly maintenance cost. So 15 there, 5 there. Oh, 50 there at the Forester Camp. Holy crap. All right, we'll probably just delete these buildings then so that way we don't have to pay for them. Yeah. Otherwise, we won't be able to get out of it. But that's fine. Those resources are super cheap and easy to come by. So we'll get rid of those. And we can also... Uh, yeah, 50 is a little bit too much. But now that we're kind of done here, we can kind of delete these buildings too. We have a little bit of basic resources to start with. And that's pretty easy. Actually, yeah. Let's delete these in, in general. And we can go ahead and put them in here instead. So we'll get them off the main road. And we'll make an industrial area instead. That's way better. And that's something that I continuously do in this game. Is continuously design, redesign, delete, edit. Another great thing about some of the larger buildings that you can make in the game. Like the monasteries, churches, and other things I mentioned. The, the marketplaces, you can always delete them. Or edit them later. Add new things. New unlockable things. It's kind of in the game's design. You eventually unlock new things and redesign them and move them around. Ah, uh, this is one of, one of the greatest kingdom builders out there. I really want there to be more games like this. I really want to play a stronghold game like this, too. I hope uh, we get another stronghold where it's more uh, about beauty as well as just as much combat. Although this one focuses more on the production aspect and the uh, design and building uh, than it does warfare. But, of course, more updates will come soon and the developers will get more and more support. What a beautiful game. I love it. There we go. So this is future plans. Then we'll build our little industrial area there. Cordon that off from the main road. Add some more trees. And we'll make sure that we keep planting trees in this little area here. Fantastic. All right, so money should be coming back in now that we've eliminated most of the buildings that were costing us. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do away with this gathering hut here, too. Actually, we don't have to. Oh, wow, yeah, the builder's workshop only costs us one. The well is five, but that's a requirement. Ah, marketplace is 15 in total, so five per uh, little hut or whatnot. I got ambitious, I'll admit. But hey, who can't get excited about a game like Foundation available now on Steam? All right, guys, I know it was short and sweet. I know we didn't build too much. I know we didn't get too far, but we have a lot to look forward to. In 2022, when Foundation has its big O update coming soon, I'll talk more about the roadmap, and we'll be live streaming this one more on the channel too, which is a fantastic way to ask questions and to see more of its features. So check out some of the other live streams from this year to see a big O city that we built, including a military fort, and we'll be building more of a big O castle coming up soon. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time for a full series on Foundation, unless we have some more Big O updates, and we'll build a Big O city from scratch just like we did here today with the new update. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you pick up this game, too. It's really just phenomenal, and I want to see more games just like it, and I hope to see you all back soon. Comment your questions and ideas and whatnot down below, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye, everybody. Take care, and have a wonderful day.